Well, it's about that time. Thanks to all of you that took to Twitter and tweeted your wrestling and non-wrestling questions to at OTRS Central using hashtag OTRS Central. I've also now told you how to participate in future Q&As if you so choose. So let's go ahead and get started with this bad boy. Duke THS starts us off by asking, when are you going to do your wrestling draft video? I've been waiting for it for days. I don't think you're the only one. I've, I've got to get that done. It takes a little bit for me to piece it all together. Like I've tried to go about putting it together a couple of times, I'll get like a third of the way or half of the way or even in one case two-thirds of the way through it and then unfortunately I just kind of lose interest. So hopefully I'll get it done maybe this weekend. At least that's when I'll have it prepared in terms of when I have it recorded. I'm not going to promise it, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I'm still doing it. I am still doing it for those of you that keep bringing it up and keep asking about it. Uh, Miv Productions asks, do you think Kevin Owens replacing Kane as muscle for the authority or being hired by Rollins as muscle would work? Uh, in a way, yes. In a way, no. I understand what you're getting at. It would instantly put him in a top spot. It would associate him with the right people to a certain degree. But I don't think Owens is best suited as a character being involved with others. I truly think he needs to go in his own direction and be his own guy. So I wouldn't be necessarily a huge fan of that. Uh, let's see here. Jack Von Doom. What do you think about Austin versus Cena at WrestleMania 32? Um... I understand why some would like that, some would see the appeal in that, and it would be a match that Cena, in theory, would be worthy of to a degree, and you know it would definitely help sell 110,000 tickets. There's no question about it. I just have a lot of concern about the dynamics of it, because do you really want to send Cena into an environment against Austin where he will be booed by 100,000 plus people? Is that really necessarily the best course of action for the company and the best course of action for the Cena character? And then, if you're having Cena versus Austin just for Cena to go over Austin, is anybody really going to be pleased with that? I mean, that's something you got to think about, too. You can sit there and talk about, you know, it'd be okay, da da da, but no, it wouldn't. And we know it wouldn't. And it's okay if it wouldn't be okay. But we know it wouldn't be okay if Austin's doing the job for Cena. It would make a lot of you vomit in your mouths. It really would, and you know it would. Uh, off Leather Wings. If WWE goes with Austin Brock, Triple H Rock, and Taker Sting as it is a... Oh, excuse me. Let me reread this. If WWE goes with Austin Brock, Triple H Rock, and Taker Sting, is it a spit in the face to the fans who started after 2004? Um... <clears throat> Probably more of a spit into the face of the active everyday roster than I would say the fans who started after 2004. I mean, because let's be honest, when you talk about after 2004, you know, Triple H still wrestled full time for several years after that fact, as did Taker. I mean, you know, if you started new wrestling after 2004, you've seen The Rock here and there. You've seen Sting if you ever watched TNA. So I don't, I don't think it would be a spit in the face to those that started after 2004. Again, I, like I said, I think it would be more of a spit in the face to the active everyday roster. But again, but again, I wouldn't necessarily blame the WWE for it in this one particular case. Uh, let's see here. American Alicard. Are you watching ROH? No. I wasn't watching ROH before. I don't know where this whole narrative you're trying to set about TNA is. It's a, You're taking words that I've said, and you're really spitting them and really making it look bad. And my question to you is, how are you such a TNA fan when you don't even fork over the dough to watch their product legitimately? How are you helping the company when you can't even be bothered to get the network themselves yourself? Don't sit there and talk shit about other people not doing it. They could just stream in this and that. No, you're not really supporting shit if you're not helping the ratings number at all. So some fucking TNA fan you are. And I mean that seriously. It's no different than somebody saying, oh, I'm a great fan of ROH, but they never paid for any of the internet pay-per-views. Well, what the fuck type of fan are you? You know, at some point in time, you got to put your money where your mouth is. If you really believe in the product and you really want to support the product, then ultimately the best way you can support the product is by giving them money. So you kind of give half-ass support. And let's face it, a lot of us as wrestling fans really give, frankly, half-ass support to professional wrestling today because that's all that business deserves. Diglonious Games, why do you think some consider Vince Russo as the most hated man in the industry? Uh, because for years they've heard the narratives from WWE 
and other people in the business about how bad Russo is, how evil Russo is, how terrible he is, how stupid he is. Uh, some of the shit he's booked over the years has been shit. Um, so I understand why. I think sometimes, frankly, we give far too much attention and far too much credit to Vince Russo. Um, I don't see why he's so relevant or matters. Because like I've said again, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, you know, when it comes to making stars, when's the last time he made a fucking star? He's been, made as many stars in the wrestling business since 2000 as I have, and the answer is zero. I mean, real legit stars. We've made the same amount of number. The answer is zero. I mean, I think sometimes Russo gets a bad rap. I think sometimes Russo is also on point in terms of the fact that when he talks about wrestling from a wrestling standpoint, you'll have those people that watch the wrestling. They'll always be there, and they'll always come back or stick around, but you're never going to grow your audience. You're never going to get past a certain point unless you understand, you know, that you need to branch out and you need to do other things. I always thought Russo was best in that WWF environment where he could trot out 20 ideas and Vince could find five of them and they'd whittle it down and make two or three really outstanding ones. I've never liked the fact that Vince Russo has gotten so much shit, like when it comes to the death of WCW, because he really wasn't in charge of the company all that long. They were already in a bad way um, that had been building for years before Russo ever got there, and he was there for so little time as the actual head of creative, he couldn't have possibly screwed it up nearly as much as people want to say he did. And that's the truth of the matter. Cody Collier, 37. Could Roman Reigns cash in Money in the Bank at SummerSlam during the world title match of Seth versus Brock or Seth versus Triple H? Frankly, at this point in time, I don't even know if we'll get to Seth versus uh, Brock at SummerSlam. They might give that away at that uh, pay-per-view in July. What is that going to be? I think that's Battleground, isn't it? I could be mistaken. Um, <clears throat> I think Roman Reigns should cash in at SummerSlam. I think it would give the company a little bit of a jolt in the arm, frankly. Um, there's different options on who he could cash in on. There is. Uh, Tessin Boy asks, Who do you think will win Money in the Bank? My money is on Roman Reigns, and he should cash in at SummerSlam. Yes, I think the smart money is on Roman Reigns. I think they've pretty much telegraphed that it's going to be him, and I'd be stunned, frankly, if it was anybody but him. And I think there's a very good chance he would actually cash in at SummerSlam. I do indeed. Um, <clears throat> or we could even not get to that fucking point. There could be a train of thought within the WWE that they might not want to wait. They might have Roman Reigns win Money in the Bank and then cash in at Money in the Bank and fuck over Ambrose. And you could start the Reigns heel turn there. You could set up to a triple threat between Rollins, Reigns, and Lesnar at the next pay-per-view. And maybe you could branch off into Reigns and Ambrose at SummerSlam or Reigns and Lesnar at SummerSlam. There's a part of me that says you might not want to wait. You might want to do it that very night. You want to shake some shit up and get some attention and get a little bit of buzz going and a different feel going about the product heading into December. That might be the best way to do it. All right, let's hear. What else does Duke THS have? Uh, he asks, do you feel bad for Cena because he does Superman and gets hate and indie guys do Superman and get love? Let's not even compare the two. There are so many different components to Cena and his Superman stuff. He's the representation of so many things that people dislike about the WWE, the company, and the creative direction and the product today. Uh, and then he also asks, why did the Bills trade an injury-prone linebacker in Kiko Alonso just to draft an injury-prone linebacker in Stewart? Fair question. Fair question. I don't know why the Bills are so eager to trade away Kiko Alonso, although as I did reference when I talked about this trade from both teams' standpoints, I did understand it from the Bills in the sense that their defense was already elite last year without Kiko Alonso. How much did they really miss him, and how much better were they going to be with him? So there you go. All right, let's see here. Tessin Boy also asked, Do you think at this rhythm Owens should win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at any point after WrestleMania 32? Yes. Sometime in 2016 would seem appropriate. I mean, if you really wanted to rush shit, and I mean rush shit, you could throw Owens into that Money in the Bank match, and you could have him win the fucking thing and, you know, fucking get a little bit of a buzz going about the product, too. Have him carry the shit to NXT. Yeah. There'd be worse things you could do. i put it that way. Uh, Mexoman00, who do you think should be inducted into the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame class? Uh, let's see here. You're going to be in Dallas, so I would like to see it have a world-class theme to a certain degree. 
I would expect it to be a shoo-in that the Freebirds would finally get into the Hall of Fame. They've got to go in there. You know, and then you have uh, what Kevin Von Erich inducting. Makes too much sense all the way around for them not to do it. And since it's the Freebirds, it frankly would be one of the headliners. I'd also like to see Gary Hart get his due and have his moment in the sun. You know, going back again to WCCW theme, Rick Rude, it would seem like a perfect time to put him in because he was a former champion there. Uh, obviously, I'll say Owen Hart every year until he gets in, the British Bulldog every year until he gets in. You know, there's still a lot of names. People talking about what this guy and that guy and that guy getting in. There's not a lot of names. Uh, there's always plenty of names you can put in, and those are just some of them that stand out to me. Ilias99. Will you do a live reaction video of you watching Scott Steiner's best promos? Uh, probably not. Although I would love to watch Scott Steiner do a real deal math lesson. Uh, of love and hate, ask if you had control, how would you try and save the Divas division? Uh, multiple feuds. Actually have real feuds. Try to feature them in different ways. Give them time for their actual matches. Uh, tell my commentators to stop talking about other frivolous bullshit that doesn't matter when the Divas are wrestling because we should be taking the Divas seriously. There's a whole different list of things. Um, and then he asks, also, what are your thoughts on the Caitlyn Jenner situation? Oh, right. Let's see here. When it comes to Bruce Jenner, now known as Caitlyn Jenner, I'll start off with some of the things I don't like about it, and then I'll talk about some of the things I do. Uh, from the don't like about it standpoint, um, I, I just... And I understand this is part of the whole thing about having trouble in terms of an internal conflict with gender identity, what have you. But this is a man that had been married several times, had multiple children. You know, this is not something that just impacts uh, now Caitlyn Jenner directly. It affects many other people's lives, too. And sometimes I look at it. And again, this is me not necessarily being able to fully relate or fully understand, but it looks as kind of selfish to me. It's like you sat there and wasted other people's times to a degree, and you sat there and lied to yourself and then other people as well, and you could have potentially hurt a lot of people in the process. I also don't like the fact that this is going to be made out to be some type of big type of, uh, you know, um, entertainment thing. You know, it's, it's going to bring light to a very serious issue, I grant you, but... I don't necessarily like the way that it's being presented. Um, I also don't like some of the reactions I've seen from people in terms of, uh, you know, well, his, his mama named him Bruce, so that's what I'm going to call him. Okay, so for like the, some of the rappers I've seen that have done that, so if your mama called you by a name and you have a different stage name or rap name, should I just refuse to call you by that name and call you this name instead? I mean, there's, there's been plenty of ignorance I've seen. Like, of course, you saw plenty of it, if you know what I'm talking about, from Fox News. And, you know, it's just there's more outrage over Bruce Jenner becoming Caitlyn Jenner than there is one of the Duggar boys molesting several of his fucking sisters for years. Something seems to be askew and amiss here. Now, in terms of the positives, this is something that could potentially help a lot of people. You know, I still view Bruce Jenner, now Caitlyn Jenner, as a hero. I understand there's always going to be a conflict and a confusion there, whether to refer to a Caitlyn Jenner as a he or a she or what have you. I mean, there's good, there's confusion there, and that's always part of it. But this is somebody that we should never forget that was, you know, an Olympic hero on so many different levels at the 76 Games in Montreal. I, in fact, I just went and watched his uh, 10 for Gold special from that 76 Olympics revolving around his path to winning the decathlon gold medal in that Olympics Um. You know, it, it's interesting because in, in many ways he was a profile and courage uh, and a hero to so many in his 20s as a male athlete in this country. You know, Wheaties box and all of this. And now in some ways in his, in his 60s or her 60s now, Caitlyn Jenner could be a hero and an inspiration to many others. You know, so I wish her the best, her family the best. Um, you know, I think... It's one of those things. I understand a lot of people won't get it. A lot of people won't understand. A lot of people will be grossed out by it, but don't like it. But, you know, frankly, there's a lot of other things that heterosexual people do that are fucking creepy and scary and disgusting as well. I'm just saying, you know, it's one of those things that is sad to me because it's in some ways an indictment upon our society when I see some of the... Uh, some of the things that are said. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it or fully be accepting of it or agree with it all the way. I understand that too. It's just, I wish, yeah. Sometimes the reactions I see from people concern me a little bit. All right, let's see here. X Jordan X 57X. What do you think about the Suge Knight case? 
If you haven't followed it, just give me some overall thoughts on him. His chickens finally came home to roost. Shug Knight. You know, if he did what he's accused of doing, then he deserves to rot. I don't want to waste much more time talking about that piece of crap. Declan M57, what is your prediction for the number of Raws for the rest of the year that will start with an authority promo? Uh, over under will be 15. And you guys can chime in on this too. It's a great question. Over under, I'm going to set the bar at 15. As you figure, we're, what, in the beginning of June? So that leaves us with, what, another close to maybe 28, 30 Raws left on the year? I'm going to go with 15. I think that's a nice, safe, over-under number, and I'm going to take the over. I'll go, like, 17. So you let me know over-under 15 in the comments. Chairman 015, who has a more compelling and successful title run? Cena as U.S. champion or Rollins as world champion? <clears throat> um... Compelling? I don't know if either one of them, frankly, has been all that particularly compelling. Successful? Might border a little more on Cena. I don't know if either one of them has really been compelling. Uh, let's see here. Philip Covey. If WCW died in 1991 and WWF picked up some of their guys, who would you pick and how would you book a WrestleMania 8 supercar? Very simple. Even though he was already with the company at the time. Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan at the main event of WrestleMania 8. Not a lot else would fucking matter. Period. No matter who the fuck else you brought in at that point. Uh, let's see here. Son Goshaku. What if for WrestleMania 32, WWE tries to give us a Survivor Series 99 main event we almost never got instead of Austin versus Brock? No. No. Let that be. Uh, then he also asked, Trish recently said that her and Lita would be up for a Team Bestie versus Bella Twins match. Would you be interested in this? You know, if you're going to do so many of these old school type of things, it would be wise to incorporate some of your current roster at WrestleMania 32. Could there be some appeal there for that? Yes. Could there be some interest there for me? Yes, but it would be mostly revolving around Trish Stratus and if she grew her ass back. Just saying. Uh, let's see here. Carrot Sucka. Would you be Paige and AJ sex slave for one night, even though you spelled it salve, S-A-L-V-E. I don't know what the hell a sex salve is. Uh, if... 01 Trish, 03 Stephanie, and Naomi agree to be your sex slaves for four nights. I'm going to say no because I don't know what a sex salve is. Now, if you say a sex slave, I'd consider it. I mean, to get to the promised land of Trish and Steph and Naomi, although 03 Steph would have already been touched by God, so I don't really know. He probably just could have put Trish there, and that would have been good enough for me. I'm just honest. And they also ask, uh, how far did Triple H have to shove his head up Vince's ass in order for him to agree to Owens going over Cena clean? Uh, and probably quite a bit. Um, but it might have been he had to put it up Cena's ass for all we know. And then, let's see here. Air 458 closes this out. Uh, let's see here. Give Divas a chance. Don't they already have a TV show dedicated to them already? Uh... I get your point. Some of them get to participate on the show, so they're getting money from that, getting exposure from that. Um, you know, the whole thing about give divas a chance, though, it means you got to care about them. And, you know, it, I don't understand why they're, the WWE is more interested about pushing them on a reality show on a different network that gets a third to a quarter of the viewership of Raw as opposed to pushing their divas on the show that gets a far larger audience. That, but befuddles me. Absolutely befuddles me. And then he also asked, any chances of getting a 15 Reasons TNA Sucks video? No. I don't really have a desire to do one. I, I really don't. And honestly, since I'm not watching the product on a week-in, week-out basis, I don't know if I'd really have enough material that I could speak from from an educated viewpoint in order to do 15 Reasons TNA Sucks. And at this point in time, I don't really see what it accomplishes or, you know, helps out at all. It's just, you know, TNA's in a bad enough spot anyways. There's no reason to pile on with that. I could talk about other things pertaining to the company and the situation, sure, but I just don't think a 15 Reasons TNA Sucks video is necessary, and I just really, frankly, don't feel like doing that. And you, I just don't really feel like doing those type of videos necessarily anymore. doesn't mean that they won't arise at some point in time. Um... As they always could, 
But there are other commentaries and other things I would rather do and other things I would rather talk about than doing that. But thanks again to all of you guys for submitting your questions. Let me know your thoughts to some of these questions in the comment section. And again, remember, you're a big point of interaction. Over or under for the rest of 2015, the authority getting 15 opening promo segments on Raw. 15 of them between now and the rest of the end of 2015. Over or under 15. Thanks, you guys. See you later.